have you ever noticed how we take a very meek posture with our stuff? We kind of let it push us around a little bit like, oh, I spent money on this and I bought it and I thought it was going to be so good. And oh, I told my husband I wanted a Vitamix for Christmas and then he got it for me, but now I never use it. And we let the stuff dictate whether or not it's going to get to stay in our house. And that's not right. So rule number one is posture. It's the way that we approach our things when we go to declutter. And the truth is that at times we're going to have to take responsibility for really bad purchases, <laughs> like even though we thought it was gonna be good. But here's the other side of that coin. It's that we've also made some really good purchases too. We have all made poor purchases. And this coffee maker, uh, it was expensive and I made two mistake purchases before it for coffee makers when our Keurig died. But now we have it, we've had it for over a year. I love it, use it every single day. And I would look at this and say, it was a very good purchase. Unfortunately, the ones that tend to stick with us are the ones though that felt like a poor purchase. And that really impacts our posture then when we go to declutter. So today I'm gonna talk about 12 new rules when it comes to decluttering. These are things I have never shared before. And they're based off the book 12 Rules for Life and 12 More Rules for Life. And I think this is gonna be very eye-opening too. I hope it's very inspiring and also empowering to get that next layer of decluttering done in your house. And I was surprised, I was surprised that the number one rule for life was posture, but it really does impact all of the other rules and everything else that we do. People with strong self-esteem feel and transmit a sense of security and confidence, which makes them more attractive and respected. More attractive even, right? This improves their productivity and well-being, which further reinforces their self-perception. Isn't that interesting? But I thought this was so cool that we can do something about it. So if you're feeling kind of down in the dumps, you're like, yeah, I'm that's me. Like I'm not, I'm not standing tall and proud right now. They say, fix your posture, stand straight, push your shoulders back, speak up, and make eye contact. This signals confidence to yourself and others. You'll feel better, others will show you more respect and it starts a virtuous cycle. It's about facing up to reality and taking responsibility to become all you can be. And so it is, they go on to talk about even just the neurological things that happen when we stand tall, put our shoulders back and have this type of posture. And again, I think this is something that is very important when we go to declutter because we can really get beat up by our things when we're decluttering. Oh, there's a mistake purchase. Oh, there's something that got ruined in storage. All of the mistakes that we have made with our physical possessions, but we're gonna take a strong posture. We're gonna say, you know what? I didn't know that was gonna happen. I fell prey to marketing. Marketing is such a powerful force against us, getting us to buy things. And so I learned from it. I'm gonna be a better consumer moving forward. And there's nothing wrong with me. Again, shoulders back. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with me if I made a mistake purchase or if I no longer need that item. But what would be a mistake is to keep it out of guilt or fear or shame or any of those other negative feelings. And one other thing on posture before we move forward, I wanna talk about decanting my spices because my goodness, this was the most controversial thing I've done in a long time. For me, this was a posture thing. For me, this was saying that I have gotten to a point in my home, in my decluttering, in my ability to maintain organization, that I can prioritize this space looking beautiful. I can trust that I am gonna keep it up and that it is gonna continue to look this way. And I just, I still love it so much. All right, so we have 12 rules, we have a printable. I'm not gonna get through all of them today, but I do have a printable that outlines all of them in regards to decluttering. But let's move on to some of my other favorites. Rule number two, see, I was like, oh, I think I will make a cup of coffee. I'll put a link. If you're like me, I always click through just to see what people actually paid for things. And I'm like, oh, good night. It, the, the price varies wildly on this. Around the holidays or like when they're doing deals, you can get it for around $500. It is still way more than I ever thought I would make pay for a coffee maker. So just so you know. So rule number four is to improve your own game instead of playing others. But here's the subtext to it. Compare yourself to who you, who you, who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. And so in regards to decluttering, it is so important to take before and after photos. When I was decluttering our house, I would get so discouraged because I was like, I've made 28 trips to Goodwill over the last month. And after about a week, I get back home and it's like my brain is like, 
have you even done any work in here? Why is this still so hard? Why do you open this cabinet and be like, oh, I thought I declutter it, but there's still so much more. Our brain adjusts so quickly to the changes that we are making. So you have to have before photos to really validate all of the work that you are doing. So if you haven't done so, go around your house right now, even if it is a hot mess, take photos of every room, make an album on your phone. And I promise you that you're gonna be so glad that you have those photos to compare to when you get further down the road and to look back where you come from, it is gonna make you feel so good. And today's video is sponsored by our friends at Blinkist. You know that it is my absolute favorite minimalist tool for getting in all of the nonfiction reading that you would like to do. But our lives are busy, we run short on time. So what Blinkist does is they take over 6,500 nonfiction books and they boil it down to the blinks. These are the highlights, the main points, the meat of the book. And then you can either listen to them or read them in about 15 minutes per book. So on Blinkist, you can find both the 12 rules for life and then also the follow-up book, it's called Beyond Order, 12 More Rules for Life. But also what is so cool is Blinkist Spaces. This feature allows you to create a space with friends or family where you can add, share, and recommend titles from the Blinkist library all in one place in the app. A space can be for a group of people or a topic like productivity or mindfulness. And all members of a shared space can access all titles in the space with or without a Blinkist premium subscription. And again, why is this so important? Because when we're learning new things, when we're bettering ourselves, improving our productivity and communication and relationships, we are becoming a better version of ourselves. We're also more interesting when we meet new people and, and we're making conversation with them. It's so fun to be able to say, oh, hey, do you know what I just learned or have you heard about this before it it really does increase our confidence talk about posture right you're gonna feel so much better about yourself so go ahead and scan the qr code or use the link down below you're gonna get to try out blinkist completely free for seven days and get 40 percent off blinkist annual premium rule number 12 clear up unresolved issues from the past but i want to relate this to sentimental items or things that we have inherited or feel like we should keep. So this is fascinating. It says to orientate yourself in the world, you need a map of where you've been, where you are now, and where you're going. Unresolved issues in the past can affect the accuracy of your map, negatively impacting your current journey. If a memory from the past still upsets you, write down the incident. It says that writing them down carefully and completely can help strip the memory of its horror. But I, I think that can be good with memories that swirl around our brain. But what about the physical items that remind us of those things? So often we feel like we should keep things either because that's what we were told we had to do or because it was given to us or we inherited it. And so I learned a lot from Peter Walsh and his book, Let It Go, in regards to this. Also on Blinkist, if you're curious. <laughs> but he says, under no circumstances do you have to keep items that bring up happy, shameful, horrible memories from the past. If they remind you of a person or a time or a season in life or an event that was not happy and does not bring back feelings of joy, and I'm so glad I still have this and I enjoy caring for this item moving forward, you have permission to let it go. Again, going back to rule number one, our posture. Hi, I'm Dawn. I don't keep things in my house that bring up bad, crappy memories. I'm an adult, I can choose not to. It does not matter if I inherited it from my great, great, great grandmother who came over on the Mayflower and no other ones are known to exist and so you have to keep that and preserve that piece of your family or history. If you want to, you can. If that brings you joy and the thought of passing that down is how you wanna spend your time, that's awesome, do that. If not, you have permission to let those things go. You might not wanna do it all at once, you might wanna do it in layers or little chunks at a time, but you might find rage purging your house of these items to actually, and getting that negative energy, we know things carry energy. Getting them out, you might be surprised how much better that makes you feel. Ooh, I don't know why, I feel like that one struck a nerve with me <laughs> today. Uh, okay, let's move on to one that's a little more lighthearted. I love this, rule number 11. Create something beautiful. Try to make one room in your home as beautiful as possible. Most adults have lost the childlike wonder we used to possess. Start by making at least one room in your house as beautiful as you can. By creating one beautiful thing, you'll form a relationship with beauty that can be extended to all areas of your life. You know, many of us, especially if you're still more at the beginning of your decluttering journey, we get very overwhelmed and we kind of bounce from one space to another. We do a little decluttering here and a little there and we're making progress, but we don't get to see it. 
you don't get to see all the progress all together. So I love this idea of picking one room. And I might even encourage um, you to pick your master bedroom. Cass from Clutterbug, she always encourages people to start in their bedroom. She's like, that's the first thing you see when you wake up and it's the first thing <laughs> or the last thing you see when you go to bed. And also for us, that has become my peaceful retreat. It is a, it's an area that I protected. I didn't let get messy. So even if the rest of the house was just a you know what show, I knew, I always knew I could go there just reset, recharge. And so I would challenge you too to pick one room in your house to go all in on, declutter it, organize it, redecorate it, and just see how that feels. I think that's really gonna give you the boost of motivation to tackle the rest of your rooms too. Okay, I really like this one too. Rule number eight, don't avoid the small issues. Don't dismiss the small daily irritations as mere trivialities or allow the small things to add up. It's like trying to hide unwanted things in a fog so you won't see them. Eventually you'll stumble over something and hurt yourself. So what's been so fun is that as we have gotten our house decluttered, I feel like I can tackle these small annoyances. So even things like our laundry room and my laundry system, I hated laundry hampers. I hated how deep they were. I hated how there was always always stuff at the bottom that either needed to be hand washed or you know it couldn't be washed with everything else or for whatever reason I was putting it off washing it and so because our house was decluttered then I felt like I really could go into problem solving mode and say hey I want to have smaller baskets and I want to get them up off the floor and there's been other things too I mean I won't I won't even talk about my spice cabinet again but that annoyed me I didn't like the organization I didn't like the containers and so I was able to put a new system in place and similarly in our entryway with little shoe racks and under our kitchen sink with even just how we store stuff down there, when we highly reduce the inventory, it becomes apparent um, cause I think when our house was messy, like you just kind of expected nothing functioned well, right? Everything was small annoyances and big annoyances. But once we actually got the inventory under control, then we could tackle all these seemingly trivial things, but they actually added up and made a di big difference in how our house felt and functioned. So keep track of the little things that bug you and let your brain start to think of what solutions you might put in place in your home. You know, a couple weeks ago, I got to do a live Q and A session with Cass and Dana inside of our Take Your House Back course. And we do that every two weeks and it's really an enjoyable time. But the topic for that one was the unexpected benefits of decluttering our home. And I think this ties into rule number six, which is to balance social convention and creative change. And definitely one of the unexpected benefits was that I felt so much more confident having people over to our home. Now, again, I don't think it was just because our house was cleaner, so it was easier. I think through the process of decluttering, my confidence in myself increased, which is actually scientifically proven now, right? And so I had more confidence to reach out to people and to invite them over. So it was equal parts getting my environment in order to be conducive with having friends over, but then also me having confidence in myself to extend the invitation. And so I love what this says. Psychologists agree that people's social lives are also crucial for their mental health. This includes factors like using free time meaningfully, not mindlessly scrolling on our phone. I know we all do it, but <laughs> most of us don't want to do it, <laughs> right? Um, being able to attend to health challenges as they come up, having friends, concrete plans for the future, and a financially stable job or career. Human interactions help us to organize our thoughts and give structure and meaning to our world. So we know this, right? We all know that our relationships are super important, but it has continued to surprise me how getting my house decluttered has increased my confidence, therefore my ability to make good friends and to also address these other things that they mentioned too. Rule number nine is don't betray your values and your conscious. Always follow your conscious and deeply held values. Refuse to do anything that would cause you to hate yourself or to feel self-contempt. Learn the risks of acting versus not acting, when to make a stand and fortify your position. So this one's interesting to me because something that was instilled in me from a very young age, my parents were so awesome. They are the least judgmental people that I know. Um, my dad, I mean, he, one of his favorite phrases was everyone should have one good bad habit, right? Like he didn't look at people and say, why are you doing that? You shouldn't be doing that, right? It was like this deep understanding of, you know, 
sometimes we do things because we know the consequences and we're still deciding to do it right now, right? But everybody gets to make that decision for themselves. Anyways, my parents were awesome. But one thing that was instilled, I think from a very young age, was frugality and using what we had, not being wasteful. You know, growing up with pretty modest means, you don't waste things and you don't get rid of that things that you've spent money on. However, then fast forward now, right, 42 years later, I have had to challenge that belief because I, I don't live in the same times anymore and I don't have the same lack of things. And I, I found myself in this position where I was overwhelmed with too much, but I had no grid for that. I, ha I had no value system around that. Now here I am. <laughs> and that was not my situation. I was not using this stuff. It was not adding value, but I felt very conflicted because up until that point, my belief was that being a good steward meant you kept things, you used them. Uh, if I would see a good deal at a garage sale, you know, the boys were what, nine months and, and 18 months. And I'd be like, oh, there were some gap jeans that are size 4T, but they were only a quarter. So I need to buy them now because they're such a good deal and then store them until they would use them. And to me, that meant that I was being frugal and wise with our resources. So that was very deeply embedded and I still bump up uh, against it at times. That's why if you saw my Goodwill <laughs> video, we talked more about that. Like I can't go to garage sales. I have to be really strategic if I go into a thrift store, but I had to unravel it and realize that I had a different set of values now. Now my value is trying to live with as little as possible because I have found so much freedom and peace and joy and confidence in that. Your line for how far you wanna go with decluttering and how little or much you wanna maintain, you get to decide where that is for you, but be strong in it. Don't go back on it. Don't let this stuff push you around or talk you into keeping it. Be strong. And again, I do think we can all have the confidence to take responsibility if we do ever make a mistake. Even just, I mean, just recently, my mom likes to keep cereal at their house for the kids. Well, I don't know when I showed it, but I added canisters to our kitchen and we had three left over and I could not think of a use for them. And I'm like, I'm just gonna donate them. I hope someone is super excited to find brand new matching canisters at the thrift store when they find them. Guess what? We could have used the canisters. Also, guess what? I don't beat myself up because my value right now is for a highly simplified home. I am choosing not to manage extra inventory in the form of organi organizing containers. And so I did not beat myself up. There was a slight twinge of like, oh shoot, we could have used those, does not matter. It's okay, we can buy a new set of canisters, we could look at a thrift store, I could ask somebody else if they have some extra canisters. I could probably find something else to use too. All right, and then I'm gonna end with rule three, which is to surround yourself with people who want the best for you. You know, I am so fortunate, oh my gosh, I am so fortunate. Even if you've heard me talking about, <laughs> about not having friends on Diana's channel and whatnot. Anyways, uh, my twin sister Diana, I'll put links to that down below if you're interested, but I know not everybody has that same network around them and that makes me so sad. But do you know what's so cool? I love that we can surround ourselves with people online like me who believe in you, who are telling you it's okay to let things go, who are telling you you don't have to beat yourself up if you make a mistake. And so I hope that you have found some good friends online that are sharing these same tactics and beliefs and you know how to declutter and why simple living is so good because I know it is not the message that the rest of the world is giving us, right? I see all the ads and everything too, all the buy, 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 this will solve your problems, right? And so we often need to be reminded that usually it's not a physical product that is gonna fix our problem, right? And so I love that we can spend time together. So thank you so much for watching, for sharing these videos with your friends and family, for coming back week after week. I mean, when you say, yeah, it's Tuesday, that's when you post a new video, like it just, it is so encouraging to me and I am so grateful for you. So thank you. I also know that uh, there's a good chance you're not subscribed to our channel. Like half the people who watch are not subscribed. So if you're on a device where you could subscribe and you wouldn't mind doing so, that's also helpful to us as well. But mostly you sharing with your friends and, and family is like just the coolest and I'm so grateful for that. And I really do enjoy getting to spend this time with you. And if I ever see you in public, please come up and say hi because it makes me, shoot, I don't wanna cry on this. I have made it this far in this video. 
it makes me so happy to get to meet you and to say hi and to see you. So um, truly, I am, I'm just so grateful for you and likely our paths never will cross in person, but I'm so glad that we get to, to spend time here together. All right, I'll stop now. There is a printable down below that um, talks about the rules, but also expands on them a little bit too, how they apply to decluttering. It's, it's, it's multiple pages, just so you know, <laughs> but I think it's really helpful. And I think these mindset shifts are so important. All right, well, I love you. I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.